Hi, this is Jeff Linderman. I'm a plastics application engineer for Go Engineer. Welcome to my webinar on SolidWorks Plastics. Today I'll be covering the process of setting up and running the simulations for overmolding and two shot molding, the gas assisted molding, and valve gating. Um, to, help, to help keep this webinar flowing, the attendees will be muted, but you'll be able to type in questions during. Um, and I'll answer these at the end of the webinar. It's also being recorded, so we'll be available to watch on demand in the future. So I'm briefly going to go over the processes that um, I'm going to cover. First step is going to be the insert over molding, co-injection two-shot molding. Um, in this process, it's where plastic melted plastics injected over or around some other part that is effectively an insert. The insert may be plastic, metal, or some other material. Co-injection two-shot molding is the process where one plastic material is molded to form an insert and then a second material is over molded on it. Um, this is generally a harder plastic on the inside and a soft flexible material outside such as the screwdriver over mold. The second thing I'll cover is the gas-assisted injection molding. For this process, there's a controlled volume of melted plastic that's injected into the mold cavity, then gas is introduced into the melt stream to complete the filling of the mold cavity. The gas penetrates the center of the melt stream and it cores it out, creating a hollow part. This process is very helpful with um, thick wall parts and it reduces sink marks as well as reducing the part mass. So you'll be able to save money. The next step is um, the valve gates. Sequential valve gating is um, the process of where you've got multiple gates that fill at different times. I'll show examples of this and how it can benefit you in reducing um, the part shot time and the pressures that the part sees as well as weld lines. All of these um, steps fall under the plastics professional um, insert over molding, gas assist and valve gates, the co-injection. So now I'll jump into the models. The first step is going to be our screwdriver mold. When doing co-injection mold you'll have multi-body parts um, we've got the handle, the shaft, and a grip. When you set these up, these need to be mated line for line as a single body. Um, the combine or uh, cavity tool works well in doing this. That way your mesh will work properly. As in any of our uh, plastics things, the first thing we do is mesh a model. Um, I've got all of my models pre-meshed, but I'll go through the steps of setting up the domains of the three um, bodies that we have here. So the first step it shows that we have three domains. We've got the inner body and we've got the rubber grip handle and the insert. So we would go through and assign the domains like the insert we set as domain. It's in domain group one since it's actually going to be an insert over molded with the inner handle. The inner handle we also set as domain one, but it will be a cavity, so we select cavity. So it knows that's where the plastic is going to be injected. And we'll set the last domain as domain two, that's for the second material, and apply it as well. So to save time I'm going to jump through the, the meshing part and you can see all the mesh is already set up. Our next step in the process would be to select materials. So you have to assign the materials to the domains. We have a domain for part one and part two. Part one remember is the inner cavity. I assigned it a high-density polyethylene, and then we would 
select cavity part two and set your inner your outer skin cavity, which I've chosen a thermoplastic elastomer, which is a rubbery type material. Following steps are insert. We can sign a polymer or metal to a screwdriver. We're obviously going to go with a metal. Let's go with a 420 stainless steel. The next step, as in with all of the uh, plastic simulations, it's pretty much you follow the steps down the line. Um, so our fill settings, once again, we have cavity part one and part two domains. The process parameters, these are the default parameters that come out of the material database. I will just stick with the default for part one. And you see part two has different settings that comes out of the material database for it as well. Pack settings, if you're going to run pack, you also have domain and do, domain one and domain two. You can set these as you wish. And finally, we'll set injection location which for this part, since it's an insert over mold, I've placed two injection locations on the inner handle, so the material pressure will be equally on both sides of the insert. It won't try to push or bend the insert to one side or the other. I've got both of those set up that way. You'll set your injection location for the outer handle, it automatically sees its domain two, so that it will inject domain two material into it after domain one finishes filling. There's no other settings you really need to change within the injection locations for this process. Our next step would be to run flow. Once again, to save time, I've already run the flow. We'll bring the flow results up, and we can see that the material flows through the inside part first, and then when it finishes filling, you'll see the outer skin fill. So just like all of our other plastics results, we have the same results, pressure it into fill and fill time. Sink marks, since it's a thick wall part, we've got an area down here that may be battling a little sink with. So that's how we set up for an overmold and also a two-shot molding process. Now I'll step over to the co-injection gas-assisted once again. I've pre-meshed the model. So for gas assisted, the important part here, we have to set co-injection in your material polymer selection. So our first material, got a general generic polypropylene. Then we set our second material, which for gas assist, you've got the option of choosing gas. There's also material there's for the water assisted process it's the same steps you'd go through but you choose water you also have the option to do two polymers for a copolymer co-injection so now that we've filled the polymers we can check our fill settings once again it's pulled from the material database but since we checked the co-injection box on the material, it automatically pulls up co-injection here and pulls your second melt temperature for the gas. So we'll go, we'll run our flow. We can look at results again. Pull up our flow results and under the co-injection, you've got a couple of different results. We've got a skin material fraction at the end of fill, 
it shows you your ratio of the co-inject of the two materials, in this case of gas. So this blue area has no material in it, it would be a hollowed out and cored out. And the other option we have is the second material fill time. We can watch the animation of the second material, what it would be when it comes in and fills at this point. So that's how you would set up co-injection gas assist. We'll switch now to my beam model. This one, I've got three configurations set up. On this model, I set up a single injection point, three injection point simultaneous injection, and three injection point with the valve gates. Um, so I can show you the advantages. So once again, the model's already meshed. I've got my single gate that I set up, my injection location, one single gate. I pre-run so we can look at the flow results. I want to show you the fill time and pressures at end of fill. So our fill time, 5.7 seconds. Our pressures at end of fill, 42, almost 43 MPA. We can look at weld lines. So nothing terrible on weld lines. So gating from the center would be a decent place, but it's an extremely large part. And you may have trouble filling. So let's try um, more gates. I'll switch over to my other my other model. Once again, it's meshed. Since I copied the, I duplicated the studies to make my configurations. It's the mesh comes along with it. So then all I have to do is put in the gates in the study. I'll show you my injection locations. So I set three gates, they're all set for zero to 100%, so they will work simultaneously. I've already run the flow, so we're gonna go to flow results. So with our flow results, shorter cycle time, that's good. Our pressure in the fill is a little less, that's good too, but if we look at our weld lines, since we have the flow fronts meeting at these areas, they create weld lines all the way through the part. Since this appears to be a structural beam um, that may cause some weaknesses in that area, stresses that may crack or break under pressure. So now we have the option of selecting the valve gate system. Let's load our valve gate configuration. Once again, the model's meshed. In fact, we even have the same three injection locations from the previous model. But in this case, we set the center one to fill from 0 to 50%. We set the two outer ones here and here. Since it's a symmetric part, we can set them to fill from 50 to 100%. So we have 0 to 50 and 50 to 100. Once those are set, we can go, we can run our flow, look at our flow results. This one, once again, it, it looks similar to how the single cavity filled, but as it gets to these points, these valve gates will open and finish filling the part.
Let me stop it, look at our cycle time. We've got a shorter cycle time than the single gate. And the noticeable difference is our pressures at the end of fill. So by doing this sequential gate, we're reducing the internal pressure and the molded in stress on this part. You'll have a more stable, more robust part. And another big advantage of having the valve gates, we can control where the melt fronts meet and we have a whole lot less weld lines and none that run all the way through the part. So you'll have a good, robust, solid part. You still get all of your other results as in any of the other ones. So that is the advantage of running the uh, sequential valve gating system. And that concludes my webinar. To recap, we've learned that co-injection, two-shot molding, gas-assisted molding, and valve gating analysis are all set up and run in a very similar manner. It all comes down to how we set up the injection locations and material selections. Please visit our website to view our video library of tips, tricks, and webinars. Thank you. This is Jeff Linderman with Go Engineer. Mm -hmm.